Dr. Trump, uh, please identify yourself for the record, and the time is yours when you're ready. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, for the record, my name is Marlene Trump. I'm president of, the Bo of Boise State University. Chairman Agamrod, Chairman Youngblood, members of the committee, I am so honored to be here. Thank you so much for your service. Is Ms. Jessup going to um, go over the budget first, or oh, shall I do my? Dr. Trump, uh, no, the time is yours. She uh, covered, you. uh, covered yours uh, along with Elsie, so the time is yours. Okay, great. So let's see. Mr. Chairman, I don't see our deck, so we may need a little assistance here. We'll get you some help there. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Thank you. With our 100,000 living alumni, we have played a significant role in educating Idahoans at Boise State University and making a positive impact on the state. We have done so with extraordinary efficiency for both the institution and for our students. According to the most recent data that the State Board of Education has, 2017, our cost to deliver an undergraduate credit hour was $266. We're 24% below the average of the other three four-year institutions in our state. Education is key to increasing the size and competence of our state's workforce. That's why we are so proud of the data on this slide. We are serving tens of thousands of students on our campus, with thousands graduating every year. We continue to develop new programs around the needs of our state every year. I have with me today, Dr. John Buckwalter, our new Vice President of Academic Affairs, in case anyone has granular questions about the work of our academics and the content of our degree programs. We are also proud to be Idaho's largest graduate school. Our delivery of graduate degrees and certificates has nearly doubled over the last decade. Those graduates are starting new businesses, working in industry, hospitals, and schools all over the state, giving back through service in city and state government and nonprofits. They spur creativity and innovation throughout the state of Idaho. We help students from all backgrounds develop their full potential to give back to the state. We're very proud, for example, of our service to veterans, we have over 1,200 veteran students, not including our online and ROTC programs. We've become a partner for the Air Force General Education Mobile Initiative, which facilitates the acceptance of military experience and technical credits to speed time to degree for those students. We've created a special military tuition assistance promise program that buys down the gap between tuition and fees and federally approved tuition assistance. In other words, there's a certain amount of tuition assistance that's federally approved by the government, but that often creates a gap for those students, but we buy down that gap to allow our active duty guard and reserve members to maximize their tuition benefit without additional out-of-pocket costs. In the state of the state, Governor Little shared his commitment to increasing the investment in scholarships for the Idaho National Guard. We enthusiastically support the governor's recommendation and we are so pleased to serve these students. We're also very proud of our Community Impact Program, which I launched upon my arrival to Boise State University. It reaches out to rural communities to ensure access and to increase the capacity of those communities to thrive. So it brings our faculty right into those communities to meet those students where they are. We've also raised over $1.2 million since my arrival for the True Blue Scholarship, which is dedicated to Idaho students. And it will be a featured pillar in our fundraising campaign. And we created a program called Hometown Challenge that invites Idaho students to go back to their hometowns to serve with their new talents and credentials. We have, in addition to that, more than 60 degrees and 800 courses 
that can be fully completed online, which supports our rural communities as well. It doesn't demand that they move away to study. We have over 2,124 students throughout Idaho enrolled in one of our fully online bachelor's or master's degrees. We are reaching out to Idahoans across the state, offering leadership summits, conducting special recruitment efforts in rural districts, and partnering with schools and communities there to increase college attendance in rural communities. We're also very proud of our Bronco Gap Year program. I went to our leadership team when the pandemic first surfaced, and I asked folks, how can we serve people in Idaho communities at low cost who are struggling to either make the decision to go to college or who have to take time off to stay at home to help family. They built a low cost program that only costs $1,200 a year and students can earn up to 12 credits during that year. And they get dedicated faculty mentorship and they get guidance on moving their academic careers forward. This program produces efficiency for students and families. We know that our first generation students face special obstacles and many students in the state of Idaho are first generation. Even if you have only one parent who's graduated from college, you're three times more likely to finish a college degree. We launched a new program in 2019 that focused on first generation commuter students, which includes outreach and communication, peer mentorship opportunities, and connection to resources. I'm delighted to introduce you today, Shailenta Zimmerman, who is one of our first generation students who grew up in Nampa, Idaho. She is studying radiological sciences. She earned the St. Alphonsus and Trinity Health Scholarship. Shailenta is a shining example of a student changing the trajectory of her future and her family's future with a college degree. Welcome to the committee. I'm, excuse me. I was just welcoming her to the committee. Thank you so much. Please Mr. proceed, Chair. President Trump. We are very proud to have been once again named one of the top 50 most innovative universities in the country by US News and World Report. I'm going to speak today to some special features that have earned Boise State that important accolade. And this is um, a measure that is granted by universities all over the country. So any institution that's considered a national university votes on this measure every year. We are very proud of our Institute for Pervasive Cybersecurity. When I came to the state of Idaho, recognizing the asset of the Idaho National Lab and its focus on cybersecurity, I was committed to growing our state's investment educationally in cybersecurity so we can train people here in a clean and high earning degree that helps support the economy of the state. We have already earned a designation by the NSA and Department of Homeland Security as a national center of excel academic excellence in cyber defense. This spring, we are opening the Cyberdome, which is a live fire cyber training ground for students who will work with local businesses to solve real cybersecurity problems. We work closely with our business community at Boise State, and we're an engine for growing new business. We have touch points across this um, university for this critical work. Our Venture College is coaching 215 active new businesses with undergrads and graduate students participating. Today, we also have with us Allison Corona, who's an alumna of Boise State and founder of Chicana Foods. She's the winner of the 2021 Impact Award during Boise Entrepreneur Week. Welcome as well. Last year, we launched 78 student ventures and 10 faculty postdoctoral or graduate student adventures. We also have the Idaho Small Business Development Center, which helped generate $735 million in sales revenues for Idaho businesses and 17.8 million in revenue back to the state. We are proud of our burgeoning research and creative activity, and we've fostered a steady increase in external research funding from globally competitive research awards, a 58% increase in the last five years. And despite the pandemic, we had a record research year. Undergraduate student participation in research helps them develop applied problem-solving strategies and leadership skills.
This research also provides solutions for industry, healthcare, business, and more. Our new doctoral programs over the past decade help us to further serve Idaho. These include computing, that's cyber specifically, nursing practice, and material science and engineering. These are people working on real problems that face the state of Idaho. New construction materials and practices, snow and water supply research, disaster preparedness, water quality testing, breast cancer, cardiovascular and heart disease, semiconductor nanomaterials, and so much more. I'm also very proud that in a wake of a very fractious political year, we are moving forward with the Institute for Advancing American Values that I promised to this committee last year. Boise State intends to take a leadership role in addressing the need for meaningful dialogue in our country, encouraging conversation between multiple viewpoints to spur engagement, understanding, and human connection. We aim to address the issues and values that have shaped America and Americans from all walks of life. A featured element in this program is a special series called Idaho Listens, where we bring together with what philanthropists in our state have called everyday Idahoans to tell us what they value and what matters to them. We've also created a program that will allow our faculty and students to propose ways for us to talk across divides to one another. We are trailblazing programs and partnerships between industry and the university, fostering new efforts. For example, in McCall, our College of Business and Engineering and the Community Impact Program I mentioned that is serving our rural communities is working together to create a world-class resort operations, operations and hotel management program that will launch in fall of 2022. We have tech help that is working with Idaho manufacturers, entrepreneurs, and inventors to innovate, design, and prototype new products right on our campus before they bring them out to industry. And we're providing grants for that work with local businesses. We take our partnerships very seriously. We've worked with all the businesses you see on this slide. Micron has supported the Micron Center for Materials Research, where we are training tomorrow's professionals, and I think Representative Troy, of the question you asked just yesterday. We want to keep those businesses here in Idaho. And we continue to generate dozens of new logos to populate this slide with more companies built by in Idaho by Idahoans, with Boise State graduates and students leading that impact and innovation. We want to thank Governor Little for leading Idaho with his recommended budget. We appreciate the governor's support for the 5% general fund CEC increase, which will help us retain our most valuable asset, our employees that serve those students that we are here to serve. As you heard here today, the university must fund CEC increases in employee benefit costs for those individuals who are funded by our tuition, which is about half of our employees. In addition, the governor is recommending that 1.5 million go to our health sciences programs which will be used to adjust the wages in that college to be more competitive with the industry and to continue to spur innovation. We've created new programs in that college that have been national mottos, models. I have with us here today, Mark Heil, our CFO, who can speak to any granular questions on our budget. We've also made a line item request for our community impact program. This is a program I mentioned to you that reaches out and goes right into those rural communities. And you see depicted on this slide, one of the students in that program. And there's a special success I wanna mention from CIP. Nationwide, we have seen a 50% decline in rural attendance in college since the pandemic began, 50% nationally. And that rate has been matched in Idaho. But where we have these CIP programs, where we have this community impact program, not including the students who are in that program, we have seen a 26 to 50% increase in college attendance in those communities. So where we are reaching out to rural communities, we are seeing a difference in those in college attendance, and that's going to make a real difference for those communities. 
we would like to fully fund, permanently fund 10 full-time positions to support more rural Idahoans, as well as to expand to new communities within our service area around Idaho. We've also asked for support for four career readiness counselor positions. We recognize that universities have a new charge to not just serve a student while they are attending school, but to help them translate their academic success into professional success. So these positions will help our students cross that finish line and achieve full success and impact in the state. Our aim at Boise State is simple, to help our students develop their own minds, their own talents, to make their own choices and to find their own best path. This is the reason I am in higher education, as are my many colleagues. I am very proud to be here serving our students and serving our state. Thank you very much for the time and I'd be honored to answer any questions. Thank you, Dr. Trump. Committee, questions of Dr. Trump? Representative Horman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome to committee. It's good to see you again. Um, this fall, there was some chatter around the fact that your incoming freshman class had more out-of-state students than in-state students. And while I um, am concerned about the numbers for in-state and how we improve those, can you help me understand the cost impact of having out-of-state uh, students come in? Um, are, are Idaho taxpayers uh, on the hook for how much of those costs are our Idaho taxpayers picking up? And if you don't have this information handy, um, I'd be happy to receive it later. Um, help me understand the impact to the institution of that change. Dr. Trump. Mr. Chairman, Representative Horman, we saw this semester when, when all of our institutions saw a decline in that rural attendance and in Idaho go on, we actually made adjustments. So if I may, I'll speak to that first. We actually made adjustments. Um, we increased the expectations for out-of-state students coming into the state in terms of GPA. We diverted a significant new tranche of scholarship money to in-state students so that we were serving Idaho students. And we've really shifted those dials so that we can increase the in-state student attendance and support our in-state students. But we also know that because out-of-state students pay more for their education, it actually helps to support our Idaho students in terms of sharing that cost burden. So Idaho students pay proportionally significantly less in part because we have those in-state students or out-of-state students that come in. And I will be happy to have our CFO share some additional information with you so that you have the hard figures on that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Trump. Representative Nate. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, President Trump, for your presentation. It's nice to have you here in the room this year. Thank you. Uh, um, and it was nice to visit with you in the interim since the last time you visited JFAC, and I thought we had a good discussion. Last year, uh, JFAC in the colleges and universities budget reduced the planned increase by about $2.5 million with clear intent language to uh, um, use that reduction in the increase uh, to remove wasteful spending on social justice, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, social justice programming. What measures has Boise State University taken to reduce that kind of wasteful spending? I think it was $1.5 million directed at BSU in terms of uh, getting rid of that spending. Dr. Trump. Mr. Chairman, Representative Nate. <clears throat> Boise State University made a concerted effort to be very responsive to our legislature. We really heard our legislators speak this year and in the last couple of years about their concerns. And we've seen concerns throughout the country. And one of the things we've really aimed to do is to be very thoughtful in response to those concerns that have been raised. So we ensured that we didn't have programs on state dollars that represented areas of concerns. We heard and read the legislation and we met with our faculty and with our staff across the university. Our provost and our general counsel went out 
and met with every group across the university to ensure that people understood the legislation, its, its intent, the concerns that it was raising, to make sure that people understood that we have to ensure that our students understand that their minds are their own and they have a right to think as they wish to think, that they're required to learn material, but that they, they have, as all Americans have, the right to their own opinions and ideas. And we did a, a extensive work to, edu to work educating our students and our faculty and staff. So now every time a student opens their login to their classroom, they see a reminder about how to report any concerns they have on our campus, whether that's in the classroom or outside of the classroom, because we want our students to feel like they have full voice. We ensured that we, we've always taken any concerns that we have raised serious, very seriously, and we have policies and processes in place, and the services we pr provide to our students are the services they've requested, they've asked for, and, and services that meet the needs of their academic success. So we're very, very conscious that we've seen a lot of questions raised and we've tried institutionally, administratively, amongst our faculty and staff to be very responsive and to really be attentive to those concerns. Thank you, President. Follow up, Mr. Chairman? Follow up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and President. Um, I. I was listening very carefully to your answer, and um, my question was about what steps, what measures did BSU take to reduce its focus on social justice programming, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, regarding that $1.5 million reduction in the increase? Looking uh, through the BSU website, I see centers Blue Sky Institute, BSU Public Radio, um, the BUILD program, Center for Multicultural and Educational Opportunities, the Student Equity Center, the Gender Equity Center, the Center for Teaching and Learning Cultural and Ethnic Diversity Board, all of these include what are arguably social justice um, principles Mr. in Chairman, their mission statements. Mr. Chairman, I object. Representative Nate, is there a question in there? There is, and so I was surprised to see instead of a reduction or a tapering back of these programs, BSU actually created a new anti-racism center with social justice programming in its mission statement. So instead of a decrease, I'm actually seeing an increase in social justice programming. Am I missing something at Boise State? Dr. Trump. Mr. Chairman, Representative Nate, what we've done at Boise State and what we aim to do from the very beginning was to really evolve our programming and to ensure that our programming was meeting student needs. So for example, our Student Equity Center evolved from a different kind of center, and it aims to serve everything from our first generation students, rural students, commuter students. So the programming evolved. It doesn't mean that we um, simply hatcheted away programming. We evolved many of our programs. And as you heard um, President Pemberton say earlier, there are certainly areas of our curriculum and areas in academic fields that study certain issues, that have continued to study those issues, but that doesn't reduce student voice or the, the range of faculty voices that we have on our campus. So while a group of faculty have launched a center, there, there are also groups of faculty who have participated in our Institute for Advancing American Values. So there continues to be a robust conversation with many voices on our campus, and we have worked with real earnestness to evolve the kind of programming that we do on our campus to ensure that it is serving all of our students. Thank you, Dr. Mr. Chairman. Chairman, one very short follow-up. I promise one sentence. One second. Okay, we're done. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Thank you. Again, instead of hearing from you answers about what Boise State has done to cut back, I've heard answers that talk about increases. What has Boise State done to follow the intent language to Mr. cut Chairman, back on social I justice object. programs? Mr. Chairman, I should be able to ask a question that is budget related without being interrupted. Representative Nate, do we need to keep on topic. It is budget related. Um, I believe you've asked this question a couple of times and maybe it's appropriate for the, uh, yeah. President Trump to follow and up. I'm just patiently asking one, one more time, a third time here for okay, what last, Lizzie State has done time. to reduce its spending on social justice programming. Thank you. 
President Trong. Mr. Chairman, Representative Nade, I would say we have evolved our programming. So I would say that m matches the desire of, of the bill. We have evolved our programming. But that doesn't mean we have reduced the kinds of offerings that are available to our students. Thank you. Committee, any other questions of President Trump? Seeing none, uh, we appreciate you being before the committee today and, uh, and answering our questions. And certainly, if there's any follow-up information uh, that you'd like to provide the committee uh, based upon the questions, uh, please feel free to do so. Thank you. Thank you so much.